the television series The West Wing, it was called Taking Out the Trash Day. The tendency for politicians to release all the bad news together, preferably on a day dominated by other stories. Well, was it a case of life imitating art or pure coincidence? Yesterday, as the government dumped its insulation scheme and its plan to build hundreds of childcare centres on a day the media was dominated by the Melbourne storm scandal. To discuss that and the rest of the week in politics, I'm joined in Sydney by the Parliamentary Secretary for Employment, Jason Clare, and from Adelaide by Mr Abbott's own Parliamentary Secretary, Senator Corey Bernardi. Great to have you both Good with evening. us. Good to be with you, Lee. Jason Clare, Tony Abbott said today that Kevin Rudd is gutless and runs from bad news. Is that the case? Well, not at all. And I, I think you can see that we've made tough decisions this week and decisions that are going to improve the healthcare system for Australians. Uh, this is the biggest reform to the healthcare system since Medicare. It's going to deliver more doctors, more nurses, more hospital beds, more aged care beds. And it was something that was too tough and too hard for Tony Abbott. He was the what healthcare minister the, uh, for four years and didn't even about, try to do it. What about the uh, bad news stories that I mentioned in the uh, introduction? Well, look, there's always going to be good news and bad news. This is a government that is busy. It's doing lots of work. We don't get everything right. You know, we've made mistakes, no doubt about it. And some of the things that you're alluding to there are uh, situations where we've made mistakes. And did the important thing is to news? fess up to it and get on and fix it. And did you dump all that news together to try to minimise the impact of it? No, not at all. You know, I think the conspiracy theory here from the Liberal Party is that this was all made under the shadow of the storm. Well, the announcements were made before the storm announcement ever came. You know, the Liberal Party have got all of these conspiracy theories. The last one involved a ute and an email, I think they should give up the conspiracy theories and get on with the job of putting together some election policies. We're only a couple of months away from an election and the Liberal Party are all negativity, all conspiracy theories, but no policy and that's what people want. Um, Corey Bernardi, we heard Jason Clare talk about uh, conspiracy theories. Let's say for argument's sake uh, that you're right that they dumped all of the bad news together. Well, let me put it to you, so what? Um, governments do that all the time, isn't it just effective uh, strategy? What, what's the big deal if that was the case? Well, we have a government, Lee, that is a serial breaker of promises. And Kevin Rudd disappears whenever the bad news needs to be released. Jason said that they don't get everything, anything right. I would suggest to you they don't get anything right. We have a history of failed schemes and broken promises. It started with Fuel Watch, grocery choice. We've got the computers in schools, which has failed. You've got the rorts that are going on in the building the education revolution. You've got the dysfunctional and failed um, multi-billion dollar cost of the insulation scheme. You, you could go on and on and on. And he's talking about tax reform. He hasn't released the Henry tax review. He's talking about health reform. Well, what he's doing is, is giving more money to the states, which he has condemned as not being able to manage the, uh, the health system. This is a government that is committed to spin. And when it gets tough, the Prime Minister goes missing. Um, Jason Clare, you heard that long list that Corey <clears throat> Bernardi just ran through. When you take all those things together, what impression do you think the average voter in the street has of the Rudd government's administration? When I, when I talk to people in the electorate, they want three things out of a government. They want to know that their job is secure, they want a good education system for their children, and they want to make sure that if they get sick or their family gets sick, then they've got a good quality healthcare system and a good quality hospital system. Uh, the work that we did with the stimulus package stopped a recession and it's protected 200,000 jobs around the country. The work that we are doing in education, doubling the funding for schools, not just infrastructure, but the work that we're doing to build skills with literacy and numeracy. This is something that a lot of people might not know, but we've uncapped university places. There are 45,000 extra people at university this year than last year because of the work that we're doing. And healthcare reform, I made the point before, this is massive reform more doctors, more nurses, more hospital beds, something that was too hard for Tony Abbott and too hard for John Howard. Uh, Senator Bernardi, Jason Clare's outlined some of their achievements. Do the problems that you've raised pale in comparison uh, to all of the achievements that Jason Clare's raised? Well, he hasn't raised that many achievements. He's talked about health reform, which we won't see any meaningful difference until 2014. Remember, Mr Rudd promised to take correct. over the That's health system correct. 
by 2009. You want to see the work that they've achieved. What they've done is destroyed an entire industry in the insulation industry in this country where thousands of people are going to lose their jobs and an entire industry will virtually disappear. It's costing taxpayers billions of dollars. The work they are doing is mortgaging the future generations. They're borrowing billions of dollars from overseas, spending it today for electoral prospects only, and then we're going to have to pick up the bill and pay the tab yes, for the next 20 or 30 Jason years. Jason Clare raised the fact that uh, in terms of the economy and the handling of the economy, Australia has weathered the global economic downturn better than almost any country in the world. Isn't that going to be their key message in the election and something that you're going to have uh, difficulty uh, overriding them on? Well, we started uh, the global financial crisis in a much better position than almost any other country in the world. And certainly some of the alarm that was caused by uh, some of the major international think tanks and banks were really a bit over the top in regard to Australia because we've seen that you know, the United Kingdom in particular and the United States have suffered. They had a massive you know, national debt level to start with. But what we've seen actually is conflicting evidence now that the Reserve Bank is raising interest rates because this government is spending too much money. And importantly, it's money that we don't have. It's borrowed money. So why would the Rudd government be stimulating the economy when the Reserve Bank is trying to slow it down? It's because the Rudd government doesn't know what to do. It only knows that it needs to throw money around in order to buy themselves an election victory. Jason Clare, can I get you to respond to that point? Uh, why is the Reserve raising interest rates when the government could be looking at spending? Well, maybe the first point to make here is that interest rates, the cash rate at the moment is 4.25%. That's the lowest that it ever got to under John Howard. So under John Howard, 4.25% was apparently terrific, and under us, apparently, it's terrible. What's happened is the government stimulated the economy, and it did it at the right time to stop us from going into recession. That peaked early last year, and it's tapering away as the economy recovers. The Reserve Bank did the same thing to stimulate the economy. It dropped the cash rate down from over 7 down to 3. That stimulates the economy by giving people more cash. <clears throat> Now they're doing the same thing as the government. They're tapering away the stimulus by pushing interest rates back to average levels as the economy recovers. And the IMF report that came out this week shows that we have the strongest growth of the advanced economies combined. So it is a confirmation that the government did the right thing. And Tony Abbott said this week that the stimulus is redundant. He made a speech the other day that said we shouldn't have had a stimulus at all. If you listened to Corey's party, we would be in recession right now and 200,000 Australians, that's two Olympic stadiums of people, would be out of a job. That's bad. Let's, uh, Lee, return, Lee, to that's the, let's Lee. return to the uh, insulation program.